Hello, hello. Um, hello, hello. Hello, okay. Hello, Savannah. Good to see you. Hello, Dave. I'm not being, I'm not singling you out. Thank you for showing video. Hello, Amanda. Um, not singling you out, but thank you for showing video. We're going to talk about this. I'm going to say hello to everyone in a second. Um, but no, it's great to see you guys. Ways. Wait, whoa, 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 sorry. Okay. And I'm assuming you can hear me. You can give me a thumbs up or something. If you, yes. Okay. Great. Thank you. See the feedback? It's already happening. It's like already a real class. So hello, Savannah. Hello, Amanda. Hello, David. Thank you for showing video. Hello. And, and stop me if I'm saying your names wrong, please. I mean, and if you don't want to unmute, you can like type in, but hello. So I'm going to say hello to everybody. I'm not, this is not personal to anybody. Um, but but I am thrilled and anybody who's even showing video even for two minutes today, it makes a big difference. We'll talk about that. It's not ob it's not mandatory, but it's like totally helpful. So hello, Alicia, if I'm saying your name right, or tell me if I'm not. Yes. Okay, cool. Hello, Adon, or I'm not, tell me if I'm saying, or add it, tell me if I'm saying your name wrong. More people coming, hang on. Uh, oops, sorry, sorry. Okay, hold on, I'm still getting going here. Okay, um, hello, Christina. Hello, Caitlin. Hello, oh, and I see some of you are actually at John Jay, it looks like, which is cool. I'm not, we'll explain that in a minute. Um, hello, Sophia, I believe. Please tell me if I'm saying it wrong. Yeah, that's right. okay, great, great, thank you. Okay, hello, Kevin. Hello, Felicia. Hello, Kimberly. Hello, Caroline. Hello, Amy. Sorry, hello. Oh, hello, K Amy K. Hello, Amy C. Oh, and okay, hold on. I'm getting a. One second. Okay, uh, more people coming. Hang on, hang on. Okay, where was I? Oh yeah, I'm Yaverbaum, two screen. I you, Presumably there's a screen share going on on your side, which looks like it's wasting space. Uh, hello, all right, awesome, awesome. Hello, direct chat people. We'll talk about that in a minute too, but if you're in the direct chat, or, hello, and I won't say your name, we'll talk about that in a minute. Hello, Samuel. Hello, Nicholas. Hello, Chloe. Hello, Oh, awesome. Hello, Ashley. That's great. Thank you for showing the video. Hello. Where am I? Hello, Dave. Hello. I think I'm going to say this right, but or, I mean, I think I'm not actually. Hello, Hamlet. You'll tell me. I apologize. And you know, just for the record too, so I'm Professor Yaverbaum. I mean, this is Physics 203. Um, and you know, I, you, if you've ever met anybody in your life, any of you, I'm talking to all of you, and again, if you can't hear me, please let me know. Or if you can't see me, please let me know. Um, and I know I'm taking up two screens and I hate that. Like that's such a New York City thing to do to take up so much real estate unfairly. I, I've got to fix that. But um, if you've ever in your life met anybody named Yaverbaum, I totally want to know, first of all, because I, either they are related to me and I know them or they're not. And then you know something about the world that I don't. Um, because it is that weird of a name, and it is hard to pronounce until it isn't. Um, so I'm definitely sympathetic if I'm mispronouncing anybody's name. Hold on, I'm looking in the chat one second. Oh, good afternoon. Awesome, awesome. Okay. Um, I know there's still more people coming or will come. Let's see if, three, just so you know, if, right. Okay, so that's the screen share. And you're seeing, can someone indicate, oh wait, more people coming. Sorry, I, I will finish a sentence by the end of this semester. I, it's finishing sentences is not my strong suit. Finishing a quote, I'm a little better at. Hang on, more people coming. Oh, watch out! Oh, got you. Thank you, direct chat person. Got it. Thank you. Got it. No worries. Um, and today is the get to know one another day. Anyway, obviously there will be glitches today of all kinds. Um, it, can anybody let me, are you're seeing the screen share, right? You're seeing the ridiculous, like, board. yes. Okay. And that like, that's our whiteboard. You know, I am a whiteboard person. We, we will use it. I'll talk about that, but that's why it's there. I mean, oh, and here comes, hold on. 
You're going to see in a minute that I'm zooming from home. Hang on, here comes a special guest. Hello, sir. Hello. You want to say hello? Quick hello. This is a new class. This is Felix. This is my son. <laughs> He's a Pokemon trainer in the um, professional. Um, okay, say quick hello, and then I have to actually. Hello. hello. All right. Awesome. Okay, now I've got to teach, and then we'll go get more cards. At yeah. Tim's. I think so. His mom says it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> How much money okay, can we but now spend I've, I've got to teach. I've got to yeah, teach. Yeah, but how much money can we spend there? I don't, <laughs> the class, I'll take a vote of the class. They'll tell you. No, I don't know. Say $30. Okay, okay, get the heck. Okay, no, seriously. Hey, you to, said heck. I, I did say heck. That's true. All right, you. Okay, good. Okay. More people coming. Sorry. Thank you. That usually does happen, but not usually on the first day. <laughs> okay, awesome. I'll let him know that you said that. All right. I mean, he just gave you an A. That's for sure. Um. Okay, but thanks a lot, by the way. Did I mention I'm a professor? 50, are you kidding? Okay. Um, um, okay, oh, so more people, let me just say hello. If I say hello to you right now, that is not my way of saying, that is my way of saying hello. I'm saying hello to everybody. We'll talk about that in a minute, but um, it's just my way of letting you know that you're, so hello, Elizabeth. Hello, Shamil. Oh, it's also my way of making sure I'm saying your name right. So please tell me in the direct chat if I'm not. I think it's Shamil. I think it's Elizabeth. I think, yeah, yes, okay. I think it's Elda, who else? Samuel, I think I said, Dave, if anybody I'm missing, have I said hello? Have I said your name to everybody yet so far? I mean, or raise your hand if I haven't acknowledged your existence? Because, you know, no, okay. Existence is like a good characteristic. Um, okay, and or tell me in the direct chat if you don't see the screen share that says welcome to Physics 203, or if you're in the wrong place. Um, I mean, you may be thinking, well, yeah, okay, I did register for this, but this is definitely seeming like the wrong place. Could be. Um, we'll talk about that too. Um, okay, this is Physics 203. First of all, we're, we're going to get to this. Anybody who's here right now means, I mean, all of you who are here right now, whether you are showing video or not, and we will talk about that, but if you are here at all, if I've said your name, You've already done something very big and important and helpful to me. That means you've already read your email. You already got your email. You already got the Zoom link. Zoom link. You knew where to show up. You showed it in the right place. That's an accomplishment for both of us. It makes me feel like communication is happening. Um, I mean, that's as, just about as prepared as I wanted you to be today. So thank you for showing up. This is where you will show up like for every non-lab class period from here on for the rest of the semester. Let me be clear about that too. Lecture and recitation, for whatever reason, in physics are the same thing. I mean, it's actually bad. I, I This is an issue for in my mind, but it's nothing that's going to be solved this semester. What I'm saying by that is that there's the way we conduct lecture and the way we conduct recitation is with the same professor in the same place, in the same manner, we don't actually have an extra recitation period. The thing that's called recitation on your schedule, I'm not saying it doesn't exist. I'm saying, if you see your schedule, technically recitation is 12, 15 p.m. Wednesdays, also at this Zoom um, link, also with me. If you think, I don't know if you noticed or not, but it's not like chemistry or biology where you have two lecture periods and then an additional recitation. We just have all lecture and all recitation. Total bummer, actually. I, I, it really should, it's a total bummer, but it's the case. So what I'm saying from here on in, I just think of Mondays and Wednesdays, 12, 15 to 1.30 as one big block of the same thing, okay? It's with me, it's the same type of class, if you're wondering, uh oh, wait, where do we get to go over homework problems? Or like, where do I like actually get help dealing with this class in both of those periods? Okay. I, I like to think as we get used to this, as you'll see, I like to think that both periods are more like a recitation than like a lecture. I like to think that, but I'm also kind of kidding myself in a way. Like, they're only like that if you hold on, more people coming. If you join with me in participating a lot and telling me what you need and helping me stay on track going over the homework problems and stuff like that, we will spend most of our time in class going over stuff that's necessary, that's about the homework. It will generally be after you do the homework, not before. We're going to talk about that too, okay? But just for whatever it's worth, scheduling wise, from here on in, Mondays and Wednesdays, 12, 15, always at this Zoom link. 
So if you found it, which you obviously did, like you've already done something important and right, it, it won't change for the semester. Also, if you take 204, probably the same thing. We'll talk about that too. Um, let me also, I, as you can see, I, I do talk a lot and that's like a little bit, well, as let me back up. As you can also see, this really is a synchronized or no, what do they call it? A synchronous Zoom class or synchronous remote. Like we're electronic, we're not in person. You know, that's good and bad. I'm sure for, I'm, I'm sure you all have mixed feelings about that. But as you might be gathering already, it's like a real class. It's not a, I'm not saying it's a good class, but I'm saying this is not document exchange. We will meet live here at this period every time. I will be here live for the whole time. So it's like the electronic version of an actual class, i.e. you wanna be here for what it's worth. Okay, again, we'll talk in a second about, I'm, I'm thrilled that a lot of people are showing video. Again, that's not obligatory, we'll talk about that. But once I stop yammering and welcoming you, like hopefully you'll see this is as, going to be as back and forth and as participatory as it can possibly be for electronic. Um, um, and where you want to get help from me is you want to ask questions here and now. And I'm sure, you know, it's hard to feel comfortable doing that on the first day, but I'll hope that you will get comfortable with that. Um, I know what, so I'm trying to say it's like an actual class, like you, you do want to attend. I'll also say, I don't actually take attendance. You will see, or you'll know if you know people who've taken this class before. At the beginning of every class, I will let, literally say hello to each and every one of you. I will do that because I want this to be as human as it can possibly be. I, when I say hello to you, it's literally that. It's me saying hello, like, I'm glad to see you. I'm trying to get to know your name. I'm trying to get to know you as a person. I want to let you know that I acknowledge that you put the effort into being here. It's not a way of taking attendance. I, I want to be clear on that right now. And it's also not a way of, of pointing out if anybody's late or something like that. It's not the point. It, the point is for me to say hello. Whether or not you have video showing, I will say hello. I will love it. You'll see too. I'll love it if you say hello back in some way. You could even write it in the direct chat if that makes it more comfortable. But I like this to be as human as it can be for electronic. Okay. Also, you don't have to... You only should be muted if like, if you have background noises or if you have a seven-year-old like child or, or which I mean, many of you might or, or a dog or something, then sure, like keep it on mute so that the rest of us don't have to hear your other world. But other than that, I don't need you to stay on mute. Like I, I want you to feel free to interrupt me at any time. You will see as you're already seeing, if you don't interrupt me, I'm gonna be a, run around, a runaway train. And if you do interrupt me, I will not consider it. I won't consider it an interruption. I mean, I shouldn't even call it an interruption. It's only an interruption because I'm like like a, this kind of person. But I want you guys to feel free to talk as much as possible. We're going to talk more formally about that. So you're only muting to keep background noise out. Other than that, it's your class as much as mine. I I hope I want. Okay. And so if anything I'm saying so far is unclear, or if right now if you're listening to me, and I'm going to check in on listening from time to time too. But if right now you're listening to me and you're like, okay, this is very fascinating. I'm glad the guy drinks a lot of coffee. Like that's great. But like what I really need to know is like how many exams are there or how does he do the grading? You can totally stop. You can put that in the chat right now, direct or public. If you're like, yeah, like you're talking, Avrabaum, but really what we need to know is blah. You could put that in the chat. And if I make a decision that actually, no, I need to finish this point before I get to your question, okay, I will. But I will never consider it rude. I will never consider it rude or inappropriate for any of you to communicate to me, hang on, what we actually need right now is something different from what you're doing. Because chances are, if you're thinking that at all, if you're thinking I need something out of this class right now and it's not happening, chances are you are not the only one. And chances are it's not intentional on my part. And chances are it's just because like I'm in my, my head because of the nature of Zoom, right? So the more you can tell me, any one of you at any time, directly or, I mean, obviously try not to be like obnoxious about it, but if you could tell me at any time in direct chat, no, hang on, like it's the day before an exam. You need to be talking about the exam. Yeah. Or when is the exam? You haven't told us when the exam is. Yeah. Ever about. Do that, please. Okay. I'm going to talk more and more about grading and feedback and how you get points for all this class participation. But I'm just saying, even right now, I feel like I'm talking in a black hole. I don't even. So for example, I'm going to stop right now. Just do me a favor. 
put up an electronic hand or something if you're even hearing me right now. Like if you hear me right now, give some awesome thank you. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Savannah. Thank you, Hamalet. Or, and also tell me if I'm saying your name wrong. Thank you, David. Thank you, Savannah. Thank you, Nicholas. Thank you, Samuel. Thank you, Shumiel. Thank you, Elda. Thank you, Chloe. Thank you, Kimberly. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Caitlin. See how it is? It's like romper. It's like second grade, right? But for college. Okay. Thank you, Elizabeth. No, I totally appreciate it. That crap means something to me. Okay. And it keeps us all alive. It's going to be like that. Okay. I'm a freak show that way. Um, but I am a scientist, I promise. Uh, okay, cool. And I thought I just saw something come in the chat, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, okay, so today, again, it's going to be like this for an hour. I'm going to be yammering at you unless you stop me for like an hour. It's about like how the course works and all these things. Um, we're going to talk about, obviously, there's some super nitty gritty elements. Like, yes, there is a syllabus document. Yes. Yes, I didn't even yet update it to this. I, it says at the top, like if you've seen it, and we'll find that out in a minute. It says at the top, like spring of 2022, it doesn't say fall yet because I'm, because my priorities are that, because I'm that disorganized. No, that's not really, because it was more important to me to get this whole thing set up than to fix that right now. All the content, if you're, if you're that interested in the content of the syllabus, I promise all the content from last semester is the same. I just have to change the dates and the professors and the office hours and things like that, which I will. Okay. And we'll talk about which one of you, if you've seen the syllabus or not yet. I'm, um, but the, but, uh, okay. Um, hold on. Let me just pause for a second. Yeah. So let me, I'm going to talk, but so we're going to talk about nitty gritty and grading and all that today. I just want to, again, um, and homework that's due and we're going to learn more from you. Just make, but I'm going to go in kind of a crazy order. So hang on one second. I want to see one thing. Right. So, so far, what's thrilling to me Oh, okay. So I'm going to do this thing again. You know how I said a minute ago, I say hello to you if you're here. If you're not here on a given day, I'm going to be honest and tell you right now, it's not like I mark you absent somewhere and punish you. I mean, if you're absent a lot, I notice it and then we have to talk about it or whatever. But if you're absent from time to time, you don't have to go through the whole thing of bringing me a note that says you were in the, you know, in the office of the finest doctor in Paris and you're having your spleen like like donated to, to uh, whatever. Like, I, I trust you. If you're absent from time to time, I'm sure it's for reasons. And it might even just be reasons that if something's going on in your family that you don't want to talk about. That's all cool. If you're absent a lot, it doesn't really matter if your spleen is being donated to, to wherever. Like, if you're absent a lot, then obviously that'll make it difficult to do the class. So then we'll talk about it. But if I say hello to you, it means, yay, you're here. Great. If you're not here, I don't notice you that day. I mean, it's that simple. I'm dealing with who's ever here. So when I say hello, it's not a way of taking attendance. What, why am I saying this again? I'm trying to say, you will see that the style of this class, I hope you will find that the style of this class is, I will as much as I can provide feedback and systems and points and things for things that I think are good and helping us all and helping us learn physics and helping us be a group. I will be over the top and explicit and sometimes even publicly draw attention to people in the room for good things. I, my style, however, for good or bad is I don't like to focus on negative things. If you're not here, I'm not going to talk about you. If you didn't turn in something, I'm never, ever going to say to the room, this person did not turn this in. Or if you get something wrong or something, I'm never, ever going to call attention to that. So if you ever feel like in a moment, all of a sudden you weren't paying attention and I'm calling attention to your name or something like that, it's for something that I think is positive, I promise. And it is not to embarrass you. And then, it, but if it does, like, let me know privately. So for example, right now, for example, right now, I just want to make it clear and acknowledge that I'm thrilled. I'm, I'm not even looking at your faces. I'm looking at a different list right now, but I just want to say that Sam, Sophia, Lizzie, Amy, Chloe, Alicia, which I might be pronouncing wrong, Kimberly, Amy K, Caitlin, Manda, Kevin, Hamlet, or I think, oh, anyway, Felicia, David, Christina, Caroline, Aiden, or Aden, you'll tell me, sorry, Adan, not sure, sorry. And Nicholas, if I just mentioned your name, that means you've already even signed up for Google Classroom like the email last night requested you. Thank you so much. Like you're so ahead of the game. That's awesome. Like we're definitely, it makes me think we're definitely having communication. If I didn't mention your name, it's a gentle way of me saying, please, 
there was an email sent to you, please join Google Classroom. If you vaguely know what I'm talking about, but didn't know how or had an issue, but you're here right now, please tell me in the direct chat or, or send me an email. Oh, I've got to give you my email information in a second also. Okay. It's no, if you didn't join it yet, you're not behind. You're not having a crisis. Uh, but it is, it is true that there is homework due Wednesday. We'll talk about that in a minute. It's also true that there's a, e, uh, I should never say, it. there's also a piece of homework due at midnight tonight. We'll talk about that in a minute. So it is true that you do want to join the Google Classroom sort of soon. And if you're having an issue, let me know. I haven't looked at the, I, so I don't, I'm literally, if you didn't and or if you're not here right now, I don't know it. I'm not, okay, I'm just, but I'm saying that if I did mention your name, you're totally on top of things so far, that's great. If you did join the Google Classroom, okay, so, well, then you may have even looked at that syllabus document. I don't know how helpful it is. Honestly, at this point in my life, I think syllabi are kind of more for legal protection than I don't know how actually helpful they are, but I know we all, all need one to fall back on if there's issues. So if you saw it, I, I recognize I've got to change some things in it for this semester. One important thing, let me get back to on the screen. Oh, there's stuff in the chat. I'm sorry, hold on, let me see. Oh, oh. Oh, I did, I did. Oh, and I, okay. Direct chat, thank you, thank you. A couple people in the direct chat. Um, so let me pause for a second, because this is exactly what I'm saying. I'm psyched that a couple of people have put things in the direct chat. Here's how I do the direct chat. And I hope this is okay. Are more people? Oh no, totally fine. Okay, totally fine. So great. So there's some things in the direct chat. Here's how I deal with the direct chat. I respect it. I mean, like sometimes it makes me spazzy, obviously doing two things at once. I don't know if you've noticed, but you know, I have difficulty doing one thing at once. So I can be spazzy about the direct chat, but I certainly check it and, and I, it can be a very important place. Uh, quite honestly, I think direct chat is one of the features of this remote learning thing that is that we never had in a real classroom. Like I miss the real classroom. Don't get me wrong, we'll talk about that too. But like it was actually kind of impossible ever to like get the professor's attention in a real classroom without everybody else knowing that that's what you were doing. And who wants to do that? That defeats the whole purpose, right? I mean, even if you whisper in the professor's ear and no one can hear what you're whispering, they still all know that you're whispering something in them. So like what, right? But with direct chat, I love the fact that there's an opportunity. Now, often there's things in the direct chat that actually benefit everybody else, like often. So often I will address the content that's indirect chat. I'll often address the content publicly, but I will never say your name. Like, uh, just so you know, like if you put something in direct chat, I may well like acknowledge its existence as I'm doing right now, but I won't say who did it. So I hope that like works for people. And again, even there, if that, if you are, if you're like, yeah, but wait, but that, but blah, 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 tell me. Um, so there's a couple of things in the direct chat one about that I'm getting names right or wrong, which is cool. Second of all, okay, it looks like, yes. I mean, it seems like if you got the email that put you on this Zoom, then somewhere in that email is the Google Classroom code. Um, um, and, and yes, just to reinforce. So when you get a chance, please join it. If you've never used Google Classroom before, I apologize and I can help you navigate it if you want to help. I think most of you will find, I. Look, we, to be blunt, I everybody in physics, including Professor Walters, whom you met, I believe, last week, we'll talk about that too. She's awesome. I love her. I hope you love her. We'll, we'll talk about that. Well, actually, let me stop. Am I right? Did you all already meet Professor Walters in the lab? That's a yes, that you're all yesing. Okay, great. Um, we go way back. I'll talk to you about her. But uh, eh, so I totally support her. She's in charge of the lab. She gives you the, oh, and thank you. Thank you for the thumbs up. Awesome, awesome. She gives you the lab grades. As you know how labs work in science at John Jay, I think. Um, all the grading comes from her. She is the authority in the lab. All things first, you know, go to her and grades come from her. But of course, but in the end of the day, at the end of the whole semester, just in case it's not clear, all of her grades go to me then your lab grade counts as a percentage of your overall grade for the whole class. I mean, I think you know this, I'll be more specific about these numbers in a moment, but of course your lab grade is ultimately a big portion, but nonetheless a portion of your whole grade for physics. So in the end of the day, the grade for the whole class comes from me. So of course, after you exhaust, if ever you have any kind of issue in the lab, 
if you have an issue with lab partners, definitely first go to her. It, depending on the circumstance, one or other things can happen. But you know, it's all between you and her until you feel like you reach a point where something is not gelling between you and her for, you know, because everybody's personality is different. Then you come to me, okay? And, and then you might have a personality issue with me. So like, then there's another place you can go. But um, in the end of the day, if ever there's ever any misunderstanding or communication breakdown between you and her, come to me and that's understood. Like that's how it works. Communication, I keep forgetting. I have to give you, let me in the chat right now, I'm gonna give you some info about me. I mean, I think it's in the syllabus, but just in case. Okay. First of all, Okay, first of all, that, that's my official email that I, just wait, did you just see, did you just get my email in the chat or just, that's a yes, a yes. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, awesome. That's my email, it's true. Also, I have a Yaverbaum at jjphysics.com. You can use that too, but here's the deal. Like I use Yaverbaum at jjphysics.com to manage the Google Classroom as, and Hema, I mean, Professor Walters has a similar thing. So everything you ever do, I know I'm all over the place again. Everything you ever do through Google Classroom will come to the other my other email address. Like if you send me, and all notifications you get will come from my other email address. And if you put a comment on your work, or I put a comment on your work, you know it goes automatically as emails, um, and it'll come to my other email address. Just if you're listening right now, as an encouragement, if you ever directly want to contact me, like with a concern or question, or like when's the exam or something, or like I'm gonna be out of town for a week, I'm panicked about this, blah, blah, blah. I would encourage you to use my regular John Jay email address because I check it more frequently and it does, and it and all the homework and everything you submit and everything goes to the other email address. So it gets very flooded and very confusing. So I would encourage you to use this. Let me also say right now, before I go any further, Okay, this is something I wouldn't put in the syllabus. I don't put this in official documents, but I'm telling you right now, I'm a te I, you know, I have a seven-year-old son and an 18-year-old son. I'm a texter. Um, I, I don't consider it evasive, invasive at all. You're welcome to text me at that cell phone number that I just put in. You are welcome to text me. The, one, the two things I would add, and often it's better than email. I mean, at least for me, and I think for many of you. Here's the two things about texting for me. One, the very first time you text, please identify yourself. Like literally say, for example, I'm Amanda, I'm in your, that's an example. I'm Amanda, I'm in your physics 203 class. Like, you know, the first thing I put you in the contacts and then we're cool from then on in. So identify yourself, but then also the, you can use texting and you can do it at any time of night. Like, and if I'm asleep, I'm just asleep. But what I would encourage with the texting is texting is, so that you can get a quick answer from me. The purpose of texting, as far as I'm concerned, is any information that it would take, anything that would take you more time and characters to type out the question than it would take me to answer is what texting is for. You follow me? Like, so if literally you're like, wait, when's the exam? Did he announce it or he did announce it and I lost it? If you want to say, when's the exam? You can just text me that. And assuming I know the answer, I'll just write back. It's uh, October 2nd or whatever, which by the way, I don't know right now. We haven't announced the exam. But, um, or if it's like a yes or no question, anything that could be like a yes or no or a multiple choice or like, professor, I didn't get back. Did we get back our homeworks yet? I don't seem to have one. Like anything that is quick and dirty and, and anything that will calm you down if you were to get a fast, simple answer to it, feel free to just text. It will be, but if it, but don't text me like, professor, I missed the last three weeks. Can you teach me mechanics? Like that's not a texting question. You, you follow, I think you follow. Um, so feel free to use it. Are we cool so far? Are you still hearing me? We're still good. Okay. Thank you, David. I saw that. Thank you, Amy. Okay. Um, and again, please stop me. I know I'm all over the place. Oh, just trying to, you know, it will be like this when we, but, but it'll be more about physics once we get going. Um, I'm physically on campus. So, so often I'm not physically on campus. One of the reasons this is online remote 
which again, for some of you is good and some of you is bad, is because I'm actually not on campus as much as I used to be um, since before COVID. When I'm on campus in my um, off, it's not really my office, it's technically my um, research lab, but the place to find me and the time to find me is Tuesdays. And I know that's on four, I know you don't have class on Tuesday. I, I don't know what to tell you, but Tuesdays from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. is the best time to find me in my office. Um, it's 046, so it says this on the screen here, 046, well, I'll put it in the chat just in case. Um, Okay, so you don't have to make an, that doesn't mean that's the only time to talk to me by any means. And I can do Zoom meetings and all that stuff. I also do phone calls. Like we can make appointments for sure. Whoa. But um, if you wanna find me without an appointment or whatever, come to that room between those hours. Um, I teach physics 204 from 8 a.m. to 10.40 a.m. So I'm in the building, but I'm not in there. Um, just a quick aside, that's a strange room. It's technically a research lab. It's technically a lab. It's not, it's not like, it's not an office. It's a lab, but that's where I hang out. And it's on the fourth floor, but just so you know, it's so easy to find that no one can ever find it. I mean, it's, it's not easy to find. It's so prominently located that no one can ever find it. Just so you know, I'll say this quickly, or if you ever want to come there to visit, um, you go to the fourth floor, you go to the, uh, you could take the elevators, that are on the side with the men's bathroom. So I, it's been so, so I think that's the south, God, it's been so long. That's the south side, right? Someone tell me the men's bathroom. I think it's the south elevator banks. Right? Looking at these. Yeah, yeah, the south. Um, well, I didn't see anybody's face, but anyway, you go to elevators on the south side, then you come out of the elevators. Here's the weird part. Wait for it. Here's the weird part. You come out of the elevators and you go right, start walking toward the jaywalk, toward the windows where, you know, the sunlight comes in and you see the jaywalk. You start walking toward this. You do not, and you do not go into the back halls where all the labs are. Like you would think that you would. I would think that you would. If I'm telling you it's a lab, you would think that you'd go into one of those doors that goes you into the back, but you don't. You just walk toward the jaywalk. You just walk toward the jaywalk almost all the way. And then you'll see this door on the right side in the main um, hallway of the fourth floor, like in a place where you wouldn't even think that there's a door. You might never have known that there was a door there. I didn't either. Um, but on the right, there's a white door and it does say, and it says my name, like to the left of the door and the door will probably be closed because it closes automatically all the time. Um, but there's a doorbell and it'll be clear once you're there, you'll see this Y B C, and that's where I live at least Tuesdays from 11 to 1 PM. So that's where to find me. Okay. Tuesdays, 11 to 1, there could be other times, but that's where you can find me without appointment. Okay. So that's that. Um, um, I know we have to talk about like grading and exams and all that. Also, I would love to talk about physics at some point. Um, um, I do love physics, by the way. I hate talking about all this stuff, but I feel like we have to get it out of the way so we can feel comfortable. Um, I do love teaching physics. I, if you could see if I can get this excited about talking about crap, I can really get excited talking about physics, which hopefully will be soon. Um, I have been, um, well, what do I, well, but I have been doing this for like 30 years, which is strange. I mean, I've been teaching physics longer than, I've been thinking about physics and teaching physics for longer than some of you have been thinking at all, which is weird to me, but it never gets old to me. As you can see, I'm still a panic case. 30 years in, some, every Sunday night, every hour before class, Every end of summer, I'm a panic case. Like I, I, I'm like, don't even know if it's going to work out. I have no idea. I get, I don't know which I get more excited or anxious, but it never gets old to me. And especially now that it's like a whole Zoom thing and stuff, it's a whole new system. Um, it's almost just as new to me as it is to you, but I do have some systems in place for trying to make, and I do miss the physical classroom. I mean, I'm still in it to some extent, but um, but I've tried to make this electronic classroom as kind of sort of real as I can. So to that end, once we start doing physics, you'll see this whiteboard right here to the left is where we're gonna, I'll, you know, I use that as a whiteboard and I will take note, you know, I'll draw diagrams and equations and all of that as we're talking once we get going. 
on the whiteboard to the left. I would heavily encourage you to take your own notes. I would heavily encourage you to take your own notes as though it were a regular class that you were taking notes off the whiteboard. For a thousand reasons, I would encourage you to take your own notes. However, it's also the case that whatever goes on this whiteboard, including today, even if it's only one page, at the end will be a PDF that I will submit at the end of every class into your Google Classroom. Um, um, so you will get these notes no matter what. Still, I, I think it's best that you take your own notes, but you will get these notes. It's never a PowerPoint presentation. It's never a thing that's like done in advance. It's just the board notes. Um, and then, and the exams and the homework is all based on what we do in class. The textbook, I don't even know if there is one written in the syllabus anymore. This class is not about the textbook. It's great to have text, but now Google is like, and Khan Academy and three brown, one blue, or three blue, one brown, all the, like the world is your textbook now. And I encourage you to use it. And we'll talk about that. You can and should use every possible resource in the world you want to make more sense out of the things we talk about here. You can use the MSRC, you can use Khan Academy, you can use everybody else's YouTube channels. I encourage all of that. But in the end of the day, what you'll get at the end of the weeks, what you'll get tested on is stuff that we do here. So use every other resource to help you understand what we're doing here. But if you, you're not here, you won't even know what it is that you're looking for other places. Um, so the assignments don't come out of a textbook. The exams don't come out of a textbook. They all get distributed through Google Classroom. Let me pause on that too now. We don't use Blackboard, we use Google Classroom. I think it's better. I mean, it's just my bias. It may, it's, I should put a link in the Blackboard to the Google Classroom. I forget to do that a lot. But from here on in, it's all about Google Classroom for good or for bad. It's not about Blackboard. I apologize to those of you who that makes it confusing to have more than one thing. I'll try to put a link in Blackboard, which just sends you to the Google Classroom, but it is all about, everything is about Google Classroom. All of our homework, exchange all of our exams everything back and forth. announcements are all through google classroom so let me pause on that for a second and ask i mean i know you all signed up for it so does that mean are all of you did you poke around enough to be sort of comfortable raise your hand if you feel basically like you can you're basically it looks comfortable to manage the google classroom format just like raise your hand if you think you're going to be okay with google it's kind of a loaded Thank you. Oh, that, that's a fact. Oh, that, thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Kate. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you, Elda. Please, Elda. Yes. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Felicia. Thank you, Hamala. Oh, it's like flipping around. All right. Thank you, Cla Oh, awesome. Uh, okay. That's a lot. It, I'm going to stop. Oh, oh, and even applaud. Oh, thank you. Oh, I like it. Okay. Oh, thank you, Kevin. Thank you. I didn't mention everybody, but thank you. Sid. Awesome. And I don't, again, I don't want to call anybody. Okay. That's good. Enough. That's, thank you. Now, if you didn't raise your hand, like, who are we kidding? We know this is one of those things. The way I just did that, if I were you and I were uncomfortable with Google Classroom, or let's just say I just never used it before. And even if in my heart, I was thinking like, I could probably handle this, but I've never used it. All these people are acting like they've used it. Also, it pisses me off that the professor took it upon himself to just do a different, like I've got all my stuff organized on Blackboard. I have my whole life organized on Blackboard. Why does this professor think he's so cool that he could just do a different thing and throw me like a like a different thing? Like, yeah, I could probably handle it, but I haven't checked it out yet. I don't know. Or and or maybe I'm an Apple person and I hate Google. Or if you have any feelings like that, but everybody else just raised their hand right now, of course you're not going to feel comfortable publicly saying, I'm concerned about this. I totally get that. So again, let me say, let me pause before we go on. I do, yes, I'm making an election that Google Classroom in the long run is actually better and worth it. But if you have a personal issue, if you're even just concerned or, or pissed off for a moment and just want to bet, send me a direct chat or text me later and just say, I'm concerned about the Google Classroom thing. That doesn't commit, that doesn't mean you're fighting with me. And it doesn't mean all hope is lost. It just means you're registering that there's a slight concern. So we could talk about it. it. And it also doesn't mean I'm going to change my mind, but it just means that's fair. I, I can handle like knowing that and we can talk about it and we can also make adjustments until you're up to speed or whatever. So if you want to send me a private thing, oh, and sorry, for example, Nicholas, are you raising your hand or is that a hand from, if you are, go for it. Or if you're just keeping it up from before this. Oh, oh no, you are. Oh, and good question. So Nicholas, you're fine, or, or question mark. Okay, I'm assuming he's not. okay, but oh, oh, you're good. All right, thank you, thank you, and thank you for responding. You're going to see, by the way, guys. Even if I don't get to it today, 
every time one of you so far has even raised your hand at all, at all, even if I didn't say your name or, or the fact that some of you said hello at the beginning or when you start saying hello tomorrow, there's actually points that you're getting for that. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. And you're never getting, you're not, and those of you who are showing video are getting points for that or will get points for that. Those of you who are not showing video are not getting points deducted, are not getting points deducted. If you are not showing video, you are not being punished in any way. Let me make that clear again. If you are not showing video, you are not being punished, nor am I wanting to embarrass you or anything. There's a thousand legitimate reasons to not show video. I get it. Um, also, if you're sometimes showing video, but then sometimes you turn your video off, that that could be for a thousand legitimate reasons that could involve a bladder, for example, or a seven-year-old child. So I will never judge if you don't have video on. But if you do have video on, you actually can get points for that. And that same thing with making these comments, like raising your hand, you can get points for that. We're going to talk about that in a second. But meanwhile, someone just asked in direct chat a very good question. Okay, now... Yes, someone in the direct chat just asked a very good question that I, thank you, I might have forgotten. Yeah, so they asked about recordings of this Zoom and stuff. So again, here's a choice that I've made that I think is a choice that's good in the long run, but it has downsides for some people. So yes, you'll notice that this class is being recorded right now. That is true, that is not an accident. The class is being recorded um, and that's important to know because some people are more comfortable with that than others. It is being recorded. The reason it's being recorded is yes, when it's over tonight, and this is true of every class, I do post the recordings on the YouTube channel. That is the purpose of the YouTube channel is to make all of this fully accessible to you as we go. Um, I post all of the classes on YouTube, number one, so that if you miss a class, you can, still experience it. Number two, because as we start getting into the material more and more, and you can see I do talk kind of fast, um, as we get closer to exams and this and that, it can be very, very useful to have a recording of the class to slow place slowly or select certain parts and see what see certain explanations and run them again to study, okay? Um, and number three, kind of like I mentioned before, the class is a class, like what for good or for bad, what you get tested on is what we talk about here. And I like literally mean that, like you literally get tested on what we do here. And sometimes some semesters we emphasize something a little bit more and other semesters we emphasize something else a little bit more. What you get tested on is not what the 20 years ago I thought the curriculum should be or what you get tested on is not what some textbook thinks the curriculum should be. What you get tested on is what the curriculum does turn out to be, which is whatever we do here. And that's driven a lot by people's questions. So that said, every single class does when it's over or like at night get posted on, you know, with a link, it, it gets posted on YouTube, with a direct link to it in the Google Classroom. Like I think some of you may have noticed, I'm gathering that you noticed about the YouTube channel in the Google Classroom thing, which is great. Thank you for noticing that. Um, so yes, basically as we progress through the semester, every day after class, uh, uh, a PDF of our class notes will be immediately plopped into your Google Classroom. Of course, today is just like one stupid page, but it's just like as an example of how it works. And a recording of the class will be dropped into Google Cloud, into YouTube with a link in the Google Classroom. Now, I think that's a good thing, but I'm very glad someone's asking. I think this is a good thing. It was experimental at first when we first, you know, had COVID. Um, it, it was new territory for me. It first took me a little while to work out the kinks. I think it's a very good thing. Um, oh, also it means, as you may have noticed, it also means that all the past 203 semesters, almost I think every single one since COVID began, all of the classes from every past 203 semester is also still sitting up there in playlists on YouTube. So it also means if you like to try to get ahead or one day I don't explain something very well or you know, in a way that you like, you can also always cross reference. You can also watch the old videos in the same way that you can watch Khan Academy or anything else to try to understand this material. In other words, our YouTube channel is meant as the most direct, the most direct version we have of a mini little personal Khan Academy or personal MSRC or whatever. 
It is meant as a resource for you. It's meant to be one of the advantages that we can get from being electronic. And I'm kind of proud of that fact, to be honest. There's a lot of garbage on the YouTube class, just like right now. You, most of what I've said for the last half hour, I feel like you needed to hear, but you would never want to hear it again. I mean, it's like totally boring. I can't imagine you like replaying the YouTube recording of this, but it's there just in case. Now, the flip side of that, and then I'm going to stop for a second and see if there's a, the flip side is, yes, okay, I made a decision. It's a tricky decision. The YouTube, like it is accessible. I mean, I, it is accessible by other people because it is YouTube. That that has pros and cons that may make some of you very uncomfortable that right there may be a reason that some of you don't feel comfortable showing video like i hope not i mean i hope not i think the classes are better when you show video or when you talk more and stuff but i totally get that for some of you if you know and again like I, does the rest of the world really want to see our classes not really like they're really only useful for john j people but yes they are publicly seeable for a variety of reasons so if that, so you should know that if that makes you uncomfortable and that's one of the reasons you don't show video, I totally get it. And I will never make fun of you for that. Like, really, um, I hope it, again, I don't think most people are sitting around watching us and blah, blah, blah. I hope it still doesn't discourage you if you discourage you from putting things in the chat, like the chat never goes public, obviously. Um, so, but it is true. Yes, every, anything you ever miss will be accessible through the Google Classroom. Like there'll always be a link in Google Cloud. We just keep a record of the classes You can, and they're just ordered. So you can always find any class you're missing. You could find it on YouTube. Um, um, I hope that's largely a good thing for you. Again, if you have concerns about that or more questions, definitely direct chat me or uh, text me, blah, blah, blah. Um, wait, and let me know if I did answer the, I hope I answered the question, it's one o'clock, okay. Um, a main thing that I really do want to talk about is how class participation works. Like you're going to see, for example, someone just asked me that in direct chat about the YouTube channel. I think it was a great question. That's why I just answered it. But it was in the direct chat. So I'm not saying the person's name. Like that's how that works, right? However, that person still can get points for the fact that they just asked an important question. And in fact, you're going to see in a minute that if that person who put this question in direct chat, if that person has a moment like, like, any moment now from us a class to put back in the direct chat, like, yes, you answered my question, prof, or whatever, something like, or, or well, actually, that wasn't really my question. Actually, what I meant was that, or something. If they follow up with something that lets me know whether we just had communication or not, they're going to get extra points for that too. Like, that's part of the system here. I'm going to explain how these points work. But I just, if you never participated at all for this entire semester, if you never showed video, you never put anything in the chat, or anything like that you would not be punished. If you got A's on the two exams that we have, we'll talk about that in a minute. If you got, if you got a 95 on the midterm exam and you got a 95, for example, on the final, you get an A in the class, okay? Let me say that again. If you get, for example, if you get a 93 on the midterm exam and you get a 93 on the final exam, oh, and also if you do fine in lab, you'll get an A in the class. What do I mean by that? I mean, one way to rock this class is to rock the tests. You don't have to participate. And if you don't, for whatever reason, you will not be punished. However, oh, sorry. Oh, it did. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, direct chat person. Okay. And you will, you will submit points. Remember that you did that. You might even want to, you direct chat person who just had this direct chat with me, if you have a moment, you might even want to screenshot like the chat on your side, and, I'll, and I'm gonna be telling everybody what to do with that screenshot later. You don't have to again, but you might want to. You'll see. Okay, so to everybody, let me, but thank you. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, what I'm saying to everybody is the class is designed or the grading is designed so that there's more than one way to an A. The grading, let me in fact back up and say something more specific than that. The grading is designed, the class is designed so that it's extremely possible and in fact, hopeful that you get an A. Let me back up on that. I want you to get an A. I don't have a limit to how many A's are given out. If every single person in the class got an A this semester, I would consider that a joyful 
cause for celebration for everybody. If that happened every single semester, it would probably mean that the class is too easy and I'm doing something wrong somewhere. And I would make an adjustment. Like, let's be like, to be honest, I can't like everybody can't get an A all the time. Then that probably, but if any given semester, everybody gets an A, that means it was a rocking semester with a rocking group with where things worked in a rocking way. I don't have a limit on A's and I don't have some rule that says that a certain number of people have to fail or something like that. No, not, I want you to get A's and therefore there's a legitimate A's, like not cheating A's, but legitimate A's. There's more than one path. There's more than one possible or potential path to an A because there's more than one way that people learn and there's more than one style in the world, especially in an electronic environment. So one way to get an A is to just rock the exams. There are two, sometimes three, but honestly, generally two exams in the class, one midterm, one final. Um, you don't want to miss either one of those. We'll talk about them as we, they're not in the timing of them is not announced yet. Well, we're like that, that's not in the syllabus. Even if you look, um, the midterm will be somewhat in the middle of the semester. The final will be at the end. We'll talk about them as, as we get closer. But one way to get an A is just to rock both those exams. And then if you don't do anything else, including even if you don't ever do any homework, then you got an A. Some people are great test takers and, and are quiet about other things. That's to, as long as you don't cheat. And we'll talk about that. Um, but the other thing is, it is possible to do really poorly. It's possible to do fairly poorly on the exams and still get an A in the class. If you rock homework and participation enough, like that's another path, People, okay? Um, the grading is, oh, oh, question, question, question. Okay, all right, so this is a great question in the direct chat, and I'm looking at the time. Great question. Like, so someone in the direct chat, a different person, and I totally appreciate, is asking what's the breakdown of the final grade with exams and homework assignments? Like what percentage of the grade is one exam? Totally legitimate question. Okay, and technically this it says in the syllabus, but it's like unreadable, I think. I'm gonna explain it right now, but I'm gonna tell everybody, I hope you pay attention right now. I'm gonna explain it. It's a little bit complicated. It's meant to be as simple as it can be, but it's a little bit complicated. So this probably won't be the last time I explain this. In fact, let me say before I even explain, like, of course you need to know, but if ever from here on in, even even next class Wednesday, if anybody honestly writes in the chat, like professor, I know you explained the grading last time, but I kind of missed it, or I kind of didn't catch it, or it kind of confused me. Can you do it again? I will not consider that a waste of time. Uh, it's all about communicate. I mean, if someone just asks, what's the grade breakdown? It doesn't acknowledge that I tried to explain it today. I might subtly take that as like they weren't paying attention at all. But I'm going to try to explain this once right now. But if you need another explanation or as, as you start getting grades, if it starts seeming more real and, and then you can ask again, OK, here's how the grading basically works. First of all, I'll just raise your hand if you're paying attention right now. I just want to see if I've had, okay, or raise some kind of hand. Yes, great, great, awesome, awesome. I love it. I love it. Thank you. This makes me feel so human. Thank you. Okay, so here, here's the basic grading system. And it's a little bit complicated because it's designed to allow for more than one path to an A. That's like the reason it's a little bit complicated. Or, or more than one, I keep saying A or B or whatever, but more than one path to success. First, on a basic level, you have a midterm exam, you have a final exam, and you have your grade from Professor Walter, your final lab grade from Professor Walters, and which is based on like lots and lots of things that you hand into her over the semester. But you have those three big pieces, okay? A midterm exam, a final exam, and a lab grade from Professor Walters. First and foremost, those three pieces basically are equally weighted um, before anything else happens. Like, at the end of the semester, I will take an average, like a regular everyday arithmetic mean, and I will add up those three numbers and divide by three. Could, are there, are there, like, do I, um, could there be extra credit on one of the exams? Yes, stuff like that. But I'm saying like, after there's extra credit on one of the exams or after certain things happen, or maybe you even get, uh, sometimes we do, um, what do you call it? Um, test corrections sometimes, like things can happen to boost your grade from one of the exams if one of the exams goes badly or things like that. But basically, at the end of the day, once we've made adjustments, 
you'll have the two exams and Professor Hemma's and Professor Walter's grade. Those three get averaged together, and that becomes one number. But then what gets added to that number to make your final grade in the class, and this is the complicated point, what gets added to that final percentage is a, is a generally large number of percentage points that come from everything that you did in homework and class participation. That's what I've got 20, I'm gonna explain that right now. Like the punchline is that on any given semester, the average person in the class, if they've basically done regular homework and handed it in and basically participated, then the typical person in an average semester could have something like 11 points added, like 11 percentage points added to um, their testing average before I turn in a grade to CUNY first. So, so, so say you took two exams and, and, you, and you did all your labs and, and your average is like an 83, just based on your two exams and your lab average, say you have like an 83, a typical person in a typical semester will then get what, uh, something like 11 points added to that um, based on all their homework and participation, which would bring it to like a 95 and then they'll get an A. Now I'm saying, and I'll, I'll explain more, but that's the punchline is you, all your homework and participation ends up being raw points that get added to your final average kind of in the fashion of extra credit. It's like extra credit in that I'll never deduct any points from you if you don't do any homework or you never participate. I will never take away points from you or when you're turning in homework, you'll see like you have some 20 point homeworks due this Wednesday. We should talk about, or, you know, which I should spend a little time talking about before the class ends. They're worth up to 20 points. If you get back one of those homeworks and you get a 15 on it, let's say, okay, first of all, there's gonna be time for you to improve that and resubmit it and turn it into a 20. We'll talk about that. So don't cry if you get, I mean, like, like literally don't panic if you got a 15 out of 20 on your first homework assignment. First of all, there'll be, you can resubmit and raise it. But second of all, if you get a 15 out of 20 on a homework, that don't, that's not a 75%. It's not like it goes in the book as a 75 and then that lowers your average to a C. What it is, is 15 homework points that just got added to your homework pile of points out of a possible 20. What happens is everything you ever turn in as homework or as these game participation assignments, which we'll talk about, everything you ever turn in and then get back from all of those, they're just a big pile of points that you're getting. Like the first homework is worth up to 20. The other homework is worth up to 20. The first game participation thing is worth up to five. You're just getting accumulating points every time you do one of those things. Okay. And again, there's more and more details we'll talk about, but you're just getting this pile of points. At the end of the semester, a typical person who has done a typical amount, like, you know, of homework, maybe they missed a couple Maybe they didn't participate every day, whatever, but they did a bunch of homework and participations. They'll have a pile of points in, in the Google Classroom thing, like in my um, grade book, they'll have a pile of points that will be like 200 points or some crazy number like that. Okay, you'll have a lot of points, but, and you know, some people will have 250 and some people will have like 125, whatever, but you'll have like this big pile of points. What happens is at the end of every semester, at the end of the semester, I look at everything and I decide on and with 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 compassion and in your interest, I decide on a scaling factor, a number, a divisor that will be the same number for all of you in the class. Like it will it will it will be different every semester, but it'll be the same for all of you people. It'll be some number uh, like, um, uh, let's say, 15. OK. And what that means is I take your pile of points and I divide it by 15 at the end of the semester. I can't know what that number is until the end of the semester, but whatever it is, it's true for all of you. And it's determined so that grades are better, not worse. Um, so say you accumulated 150 points of homework and particip participation, all that. And again, even if we don't finish today talking about how you get those points, just every time you turn in a homework or you turn in a participation thing, 
you'll get points. Say you have 150 points at the end of the semester and say that my number that I decide on, which you'll eventually learn, like I'll, you know, hand out a thing to everybody when the grades are coming out, say my number is 15. So you have 150 points. I divide that by 15. That means your total homework participation credit is 10. That means 10 points will be added to your um, testing average. So if you had an 83 test and lab average, now you have a 93, okay? And then one final thing happens for everybody is that also even on top of that, everybody has an opportunity to get either zero or one extra point for just general citizenship, general engagement, like of whatever kind, like some of you will never ever wanna talk because you're not comfortable, but you'll send me direct chats a lot or they'll send me texts a lot or whatever. And I'll know you're alive that way. Some of you will talk a lot. Some of you will screen share a lot, but just if somehow you've made your presence very known and you've engaged and you've just shown good, you know, engagement, you'll get one extra point on top of all of that. What's the purpose of that? Quite honestly, the purpose of that possible one extra point is if you're right on the bubble of something, if after all of this, oh, I'm looking at the time, it's 1.15, say, say to make a better example, say that you say that you had an 82 testing average, okay, with your labs and your exams, and then you got 10 points based on all of your participation and all of then your homeworks. So now you have a 92, okay, but now that means you're right on the cusp, like that's technically an A minus, it's not technically an A, but you've been such a good citizen, like you've been here, you've like shown up to every, you're to early in the waiting room, to every Zoom, whatever it is, I have the right to give you one extra point um, in that moment, I can give it to anybody or everyone, and it, largely I have that in the system to push people over the bubble if otherwise, if they've worked this hard and they're right on the freaking cusp and the math didn't work in their favor, there's an extra point latitude I have there, it's in the syllabus, it's called for participation, even though there's a million other ways to reward your participation. So then you get that extra point and then boom, you have an A for the semester, okay? Now, this is all, again, there's more details to this, but the long and short of it is, you first get graded on exams, you have an average for your exams in your lab. Again, if that average is high enough, you don't even need any of the rest of this, you get an A or you get a high grade in a story. However, all the other stuff is all these points, it gets plopped on top of that. It's extra in the sense that if you don't do it, you don't do it, you don't get punished. But for a lot of, but I'm saying typical people will get like 11 points or something added to their average based on this. You could be a rock star and do so much that you get like 15 to 20 points from all that. And as you all can do the math, that, that can change your grade by like, you know, a lot of grades. So the system is designed so that if you've got any desire, if you follow instructions, if you're here, if you want to get a good grade, there's more than one way to do it. Even if you have deficiencies in certain areas, like you're a horrible test taker or you're horribly, like don't want your voice on YouTube or whatever, okay? That, so that's, so the system works that exams are straight up averaged and labs, and then all the participation stuff gets added on. Okay, I'm a little, does that make, and again, I know you have homeworks that are due this Wednesday, technically, that you might be nervous about if we leave today, which I, if I haven't addressed them at all, so I would like to address them, but are we kind, can you just raise your, are you kind of clear what's happening? So, okay, thank you, Amy. Thank you. Thank you, Caitlin. Thank you, Alicia. Okay, thank you, Adon. All right, awesome. Uh, and there's a, thank you, Nicholas. Thank you, Elder. Okay, and if I don't mention you right now, I'm sorry, I'm just going so fast. Thank you. Well, I'll try. Uh, well, okay, thank you. Okay, I, thank you. Good. Now, let me be even a little bit more specific. Okay, there's regular physics. And again, from here on in, please, hopefully you're seeing, I mean, yes, I'm babbling, babbling. It's kind of, I mean, it must be monotonous to you. I, I don't know. Um, and I'm not, I'm barely using the board. Oh, oh, Kevin. Oh, sorry, Kevin, question? Or you're just keeping your, no, you're good. Okay, okay, okay. There are two, wait, is it two? Yeah, I think there are two actual physics assignments due this Wednesday. Uh, when I say actual, I mean, there's three. Okay, if you looked in the Google Classroom, and again, stop me if what I'm about to say is new information or weird. If you looked a little bit through the Google Classroom and there'll be other things, you know, it'll populate more as we go. But if you looked a little bit there, you would notice that technically there's one five point homework thing called game turn one or something like that. Do it midnight tonight, do it 1159 tonight, which is odd, I know, I'll explain. 
And then there's two sort of more standard looking physics assignments, um, like quantitative problem solving assignments due this Wednesday for class period. Okay. First of all, I'm totally aware that I didn't discuss any physics at all today. That might annoy you. Um, that, but that's not actually um, an accident. The homeworks that are due Wednesday, I do want you to try. I do want you to try your best. I do want you to hand in. I, I believe, and I know some of you took physics in high school, some of you have a background, some of you don't. Some of you are better, have more of a comfort with math. I mean, I know you're all required to take calculus, but some of you are more comfortable with it. Some of you are less. I get all of that. The homeworks, at least that are due Wednesday, in theory, everything you need to know to do the homeworks is written in the sheets. Like the homeworks are just about a couple of definitions. They give you the definitions in the sheets and in theory, and the definitions sort of turn into equations. But in theory, every question that's being asked on those sheets is just based on applying the definition that's given in the sheet. In theory, you don't need to have done any textbook reading or taken any high school physics, or in theory have done anything to try to do those homeworks. Some of you will, okay? And I don't expect you to do any reading. Are you allowed, once you look at those homeworks, are you allowed to check out Khan Academy or a textbook that you might have or a textbook that you might have bought or whatever. And if you did spend money, it's not a waste. You'll also need that same textbook for Physics 204. So like, don't throw it away. But but if it, but if we'll get to that too. You don't really need any textbook. But if you did spend money or if you have an old PDF of an old version of the textbook, that, that's fine too. But anyway, those homeworks in theory, you can do just based on what's written there. You can at least try. Maybe you'll get all the right answers. Maybe you won't, but you can do them. You can try them. Are you allowed to talk to each other? Yes. Are you allowed to go on Khan Academy or whatever? Yes. Am I making fun of Khan Academy? Absolutely not. I think it's an amazing resource. Also, for those of you who are, I think there's a website that you might have. Or are you allowed to go back to old videos where I go over that homework? Can you go to my old Physics 203 classes on the YouTube channel and watch as I went over that homework? Absolutely. I, I'd be thrilled, frankly. That'd be amazing. Of course you can do that. Can you go to this other website that's called Three Brown, One Blue, which is like kind of more advanced than Khan Academy. The graphics are amazing or the visuals, whatever. It's more sophisticated, but it, yes, you can do that. By Wednesday, what I want you to do is try to turn in solutions to those two homeworks. Most of Wednesday, we're going to be talking about how I expect you to do the homeworks, what I'm looking for, what the format is and stuff like that. We're going to run out of time today, so I won't be able to do that. But don't worry. I mean, for the most part, the, what you'll see is you get points for doing the homework. It's not really about, I know you've heard this a million times from other professors, but I'm really looking for process and engagement and thoroughness. You're not being graded on right or wrong answers until the exams. So even if you get every single answer wrong on any of these homework, it's, it's still totally possible to get all of the points. Number two, especially with these early homeworks, as long as you turn them in on time, even if you do them all in a way that you ultimately find out is not what I was looking for, you can, you'll still totally have time to resubmit and get back all the points and you won't be punished for that. You'll, we'll talk more about that on Wednesday. What I want is attempts from you on both of these regular, I see the time is almost 1.30, almost, but so on the regular homeworks, they are due. But I, and I know I didn't talk about them, but I know that you know, that I know that I didn't talk about them. There, I'm, I'm expecting you to try, I wanna see. And there, it's not a diagnostic test, just see if you can manage to use the definitions in the sheets and apply them. What I am looking for to be formatting wise, we'll get into this on Wednesday. What I would like is for you on a set, don't write out your answers or your work on those actual sheets. Like whether you print them out or not, or whether you, what I want you to do is either, uh, is just write out full solutions, like show all your work, write out full solutions on a separate piece of paper, on a blank piece of paper and circle your answers, but don't just put answers, write out clear like problem one, like this is the question, here's all my work, here's the answer and circle it. Do that on a separate blank piece of paper and then scan it in or photograph or whatever and turn those separate pieces of paper into a PDF or a Google doc or whatever and submit a, like, 
separate sheets into, you'll, you'll see in the Google Classroom, there's a way to submit homework. Or if you want to type out directly into your computer, that's totally fine too. I mean, all of your different, you know, have relationships with different relationships. With, I'm not saying you have to write out, but I'm saying don't try to squeeze your answers into that question sheet. That's an assignment sheet. Your homework goes on like its own blue book, so to speak. If you're really, really advanced or you're really slick and you want to like, you could take my sheet and then make lots of extra space or something, you can sort of do that. But basically what I'm saying is I don't want to see my questions spit back to me. I want to see your work handed in, whether you typed it directly into the computer, which some of you are, you know, but for some of you, that's hard to do with equations and stuff. Either way, you're going to submit the homework. Um, you're going to make attempts on those two regular homeworks for Wednesday. You'll be graded on attempts and thoroughness. And if you don't, your goal is to get the full 20 points. If you don't get the full 20 points Wednesday, it's fine. You'll have an opportunity to resubmit and then you'll get the full 20 points. And so don't worry. Okay. So just do your best so I can see. I know we have six minutes left. That's on the two. I, I believe, I mean, I think there was two that were due this Wednesday and one due next Monday. We'll talk about that. But then with, oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, oh, okay, good, good, good. Oh, thank you, direct chat person. Oh, oh, good. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Thank you, direct chat person. Okay, awesome, awesome. Now, very quickly too, with five minutes left, you'll notice that there was this, but, but thank you for saying that. Um, and you'll see, you'll get points. Screenshot that, direct chat person who just acknowledged that I answered their question, screenshot it. Because here's the other deal. You'll see that do midnight tonight is something called game turn one. Game refers to our class participation game. I mean, it's a game because hopefully it's not that stressful. It's a game because I do the points sort of in the manner of a video game or it's kind of modeled after certain video games like Animal Crossing for what it's worth. Um, um, but, but here's the way class, class participation works is that all different forms of participating, including chat, including saying hello, including questions. You get points for all of them, but you have to submit, like you have to tell me that you did that, and then and then I record the points. So how it works is on a base level, at the end of every class, I ask you, as a, as a, as a turn in our game, at the end of every class, I ask you to just jot down a reminder or a screenshot or anything, to jot down a reminder or an indicator of any way at all that you participated today, and there's still four minutes left for you to do this, that could literally include that you said hello in the chat at the beginning of class. Every class, I'm gonna say hello to you. If you write hello in the chat to the rest of the class, that counts as participation. And literally, so, so in fact, if you wanna say hello right now, just put in the chat, please do, just so that, okay, honestly, so that then on that game turn one, where it says like all this language, it says like, submit a, da -da 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 -da, a PDF or a Word doc, you can write there, you could type straight into Google Classroom. You don't need to make a whole separate thing. You could just type in like, today I said hello in the chat. And if it's that simple, you don't have to prove it. You don't have to screenshot something as simple as that. Just say, I said hello in the chat and, I, and turn it in before midnight tonight. The idea of that is just while it's still fresh in your mind and it takes you one second to turn it in, It'll take me one second to put a check and be like, thank you. And I'll give it back. And you get five points for doing that. Every day that will happen. Now, there's uh, you'll see that there's other assignments that will start coming in. Like if you've submitted video, submit a screenshot of that and you'll get 15 points. Like you're going to see that other game, other gaming portals like will open for other ways that you could participate. So any way that you participate, uh, there'll be a portal for, and you just submit it in there and then you'll get the points for that. I hope you are, I'm saying this quickly because we're about to run out of time. But so the idea is as we go, like I haven't opened those portals yet, but I want you to get used to it first. The first thing is just any way that you participate at all, including like the 23 people, hopefully just now that said hello in the chat. And it's not a joke. If you just did that, great. So you're going to write, I said hello, and you're going to submit it and you'll get and you'll submit it before midnight. If you submit it after midnight, you'll get four points instead of five. Okay. So weirdly, I'm more strict about timing with these participation things because because they're easy, they're fast. I'm more strict about the timing there. It's like to keep us in dialogue with each other and keep the, get me to know you faster. With regular homework, you'll see I'm loose about resubmissions and lateness because they take a lot of thought and and then people get nervous. And so with this stuff, if you submit it before midnight, you'll get the full five points. You'll see a portal will open up, for example, very soon. For example, a portal will open up that's called closing a conversational loop. 
That's just an example. And that will be anytime you ever acknowledge that I answered your question. Like if you asked a question and I answered it, and then you said, as two people already did in the chat, like, yes, you answered my question. You'll be able to screenshot that in the closing loop portal and you'll get like more than five points for that. Can you double dip? Yes. You will find, we're gonna open a lot of participation portals. Anything that you ever participated that applies to any of those portals, you put it in all of them and you'll get points for it. So it's, if you know what I'm talking, it's kind of like Nook Miles in Animal Crossing, if that reference means. It's just like, but it's your job to tell me when you did that. So it's also keeping a record of self-reflection, but that's where the, that, so the game thing is all about that. It's a con opening up of portals where you submit however you participated and you'll see that if you screen share you get points for that if you do it if you put an avatar of you if you don't want to show video but you just show an avatar of you just so it's not a freaking black box just so i learned something about your personality you can do that and you'll get points for that etc cetera, etc cetera. okay so anytime you participate is an opportunity to keep a record but put in the portal you get points that's how that works so i think we have one are we, but i just saw that uh, thank you for a million of you just oh is it fine with you Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Google Docs and PDFs, it, it, nothing has to be a Word doc. Anything that you type in, you'll see with Google Classroom, it allows you to just make a fresh document right there in the Google Classroom, like, um, uh, what do you, system. Um, so no, anything is fine. I'm just, I'm basically trying to say to everybody, I don't, for most of us still doing math and science stuff, most of us still have an easier time with pen and paper. So you can use pen and paper and then you just scan it and turn it into a PDF or Google Doc. One thing I am saying for any normal homework, don't, the one thing I can't have, but we'll learn all this Wednesday. If you have a five page homework, don't submit to me five different JPEGs. That gets very confusing and weird. Like somehow you have to combine them all into one file and submit one file per one homework. But any errors that are made between here and Wednesday will not be punished. Just try your best for Wednesday. And we're going to talk Wednesday about what I was really looking for and stuff. I'm just quickly doing a screenshot. Yeah, yeah. You could totally put screenshots in assignments that are due tonight. Absolutely. Is it fine if I had homework? It does not have to be. Word is, it does not have to be Word. Google Doc and PDFs actually work better, frankly, than Word. But if Word works and it works, then it's fine. What is the top right of the whiteboard? Oh, oh, great question about the top right. No, great question about, the, and all these questions that you all just put in the chat, please screenshot them because you'll have portals later where you can get credit for them. I, yes, I, there's a lot, even in my one stupid page today, there's things I didn't explain. I'll explain it tomorrow. I mean, Wednesday, the top right, the RST. Great question. I don't have time to explain it now, but I will. Uh, emoji reaction can totally be used for participation. Yes, absolutely. I love, you'll see if you ever start texting me. I'm a bit, I love emojis. Uh, um, hi. Okay, great. I'm seeing all the hello. So I'm just, I don't want to keep you. I know it's one thing. I'm just seeing if I answered all the questions, but no, it looks like you guys, it seems like we know what's going on. I really appreciate all your, if I didn't answer a question today, please ask it again on Wednesday or text me or whatever, but I, but I'm good if you guys are basically, oh, the portals. Oh, 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 the portals I was just mentioning, they haven't opened up yet. The only portal that's open right now is game turn one, but under that whole category that's called game class participation, portals will start opening up. They, they haven't opened yet. So just hold on to any screenshots or anything you have. They, they will, I just don't like to overwhelm people on the first day, but no, you're not missing anything. They're not open yet. Hopefully I answered that question, but okay, it's 1.32. I know you have to go. So, oh, the last, but I will stay until you go. So you can go, I will wait until the last person goes just in case there's any questions I haven't answered, but thank you. Thank you. And thank you counts as participation, that counts. Thank you. Hey, have a good day, guys. Have a good day. Thanks. You too. Have Bye, a Professor. Day. Have a good day. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.